Oh, you know, the preseason, it, it's a great night regardless. You know, you get a chance to see a lot of young players play. And uh, our starting group played 19 plays. And, um, you know, I think they were, it was a good learning experience for them. Some young guys who haven't played a lot of football had to battle through some things. And certainly when the real young guys went in for most of the game, it was great to see them. It's an opportunity for them uh, to take it from here, this practice field, and go out and play in a game and see how they respond to that, see how they respond to what's good, if they can keep playing, see how they respond to the adversity and see if they can keep playing. So uh, a great learning experience for them and a great learning experience for us. With the, with the, where your offensive, offensive line is, where do you think your offensive line is in the progression at this point? Yeah, you had your starting group out there. Yeah, I think you said it. It's a progression really with everybody on our team right now. And uh, you go through training camp and you practice against each other and then you go through the process of playing in these preseason games. And typically it's a ramp up as you go in preseason, so they'll play more as we get going. And uh, it was just good to see them out there. Obviously, we're, we're a, a younger group. Guys need to play. Guys need to play individually. They need to play together. And that's the process we're in right now. Coach, one of those young guys is Matt Pert. He gave up a sack you know, on the first drive. Um, how did you think he responded to that? Yeah, it wasn't a good play. Um, but it was a good response. You know, I think after that, he settled in a little bit more, uh, did a good job both in the run game and as a protector. Wasn't perfect by any means, but he's one of those guys we're talking about. You know, Matt's a young player. He's got a lot of tools. He just needs to play in games. He needs to play against NFL players in a game-type situation. And to see him respond the way he did, that was a positive thing for him. Jason, what have you learned about some of your younger receivers that have been out there since Kenny and Kadarius have been, and John Ross? For at least the last week, I haven't been able to. Uh, uh, really, the same answer. It's just so good to see those guys out there. And you know, anytime there's an injury or a guy's not in the lineup, it's an opportunity for somebody else, particularly this time of year. So you know, we have 90 or so guys on our team now. We'll go to 53, and it's a great opportunity for us to evaluate them. And really, what you're looking for, as much as anything else, are they taking advantage of opportunities? Are they getting better? Are they prepared for the opportunity? Then, do they, then do they learn from it? And I think across the board, without singling anybody out, I think they're doing that. Coach, this is, this is a tough, this is a tough league for rookies. And Tony's missing a lot of time. Are you starting to get a little concerned that he's falling too far behind? It, it just is what it is. Uh, you know, he he wants to be out there. We want him to be out there. He's just had a couple different situations that he's dealing with. So what you have to do is take the approach of okay, what opportunities do I have? Meeting room, walk through those kinds of things. You have to take advantage of those. We want him to be out there at practice every day, getting reps. We want him playing in the preseason games. That's just not how it is right now. So you take advantage of the chances you do have to get better. Are you seeing, we see the results, obviously, if it's a completion, if it's an interception, if it's an incompletion. Are you seeing Daniel make better decisions during practice? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Daniel's growing every day. I mean, Daniel has tools. Daniel approaches it the right way. I think the biggest thing for him is to play with his teammates. You know, play with the guys up front, get that communication right, play with the receivers, you know, be out there in all the different situations that you, that you come across and, and learn and grow from them. Uh, that's a big part of playing quarterback in this league is just, you know, developing chemistry with the guys around you. So we're in the process of doing that. You see him grow, you see the group, the group grow. Jason, without knowing exactly when Saquon is going to come back, does that affect how you prepare offensively what you want to implement, not knowing what you're going to have with the uh, Not necessarily. You know, we feel good about the guys behind him. Devontae Booker is a good football player. He's played a lot of snaps in this league. Obviously, Saquon's one of our best players. Uh, so we want to get him back quickly. He's made great progress. He's worked really, really hard to come back from that injury. And you see the strides he's making every day. Uh, but we're going to be smart with him. We'll be deliberate with him like we would with any player, not put him out there before he's ready to go. Uh, but in the meantime, it's an opportunity for the other guys. And we feel good about Book. Uh, you know, Corey has gotten some opportunities for us. He's shown that he can play in this league. So giving those guys some opportunities to grow in the system and then have confidence in them once we get going. So feel good about their progress. Jason, from your experience, what is most valuable about joint practices? Oh, I think you change the environment up. Uh, you go against other people. You hit other people. You see different systems. Uh, it's a naturally more competitive environment for everybody. It's naturally a little bit more uncomfortable. You don't know how the other guys are, you know, what the systems are, what the schemes are. So everybody has to respond to that. And, and that's, a, again, a great opportunity to grow. 
And uh, so I think it'll be a good week for us in Cleveland and then next week up in New England. It'll be fun for us. And I think we'll grow as a team as a result. Jason, one of the biggest reactions on Saturday night was Sandro's run. I mean, have you ever seen that for a guy who's, you know, he's at the bottom of the roster, it would seem. Oh, uh, it was spectacular. And uh, I think if you look at the side copy of the film and you see the eruption on our sidelines, it was everybody. It was universal. And uh, it was a really good run. You know, there was a Mike linebacker who had a chance to get him uh, in the end zone. He makes that guy miss. He makes the safety miss. He gets out in the open field. It could have been an 18-yard run. You know, he skinnies the guy up, cuts laterally, makes it a 48-yard run. I think everybody saw that. You know, Sandra's is a guy who works really hard. He's very well respected uh, among his teammates and his coaches. And uh, for a guy like that to get an opportunity and take advantage of like that, uh, it was really fun to see. And I think our, our players responded accordingly. Are you renaming the play to uh... No, we're not. Not, not quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> the, the offensive assistants are over here. Jason will be a few more minutes here. Kyle Rudolph obviously has been, you know, fighting to get back on the field or whatever. But how how involved has he been behind the scenes with you guys uh, during training yeah, camp? Yeah, Kyle's been great to have around. He's really a smart player, obviously a very accomplished player, and uh, he's a veteran presence. Uh, he he picks things up quickly, even though he hasn't gotten reps. He understands what we're trying to do. He can help the younger players, and he's working really hard to get back. And uh, a really good example. The rest of his teammates were excited to get him out there. Speaking of the tight ends, you lost Levine to a season-ending injury. I mean, right now it kind of looks like the depth's a little thin there. I mean, is anybody really stepping up right now? And how do you feel about that group as a whole? Well, we certainly feel bad about Levine because he's worked really hard and he's a good player for us. And we're excited about him and the role that he was going to be in. But again, you know, injuries like that provide opportunities. You know, he, he's going to work his way back and, and he has a lot of football ahead of him. But the younger guys who are behind him, have a chance to step up. So we're excited to see those guys. Uh, you know, Cole Hicatini has done a good job for us. He got some snaps the other night. Uh, Nikki has done a good job. Excited to see Hausman and some of those other guys. So again, it's reps in practice, hopefully reps in the preseason game, and those guys can grow. Uh, certainly no decisions have been made. We just want to see those guys play. What about Ryzen John? It's a guy who's in year two, I guess, of his conversion yeah. from receiver. What yeah, can you see from Ryzen him? Ryzen did a nice job in the game the other night. You know, he's learning to play the tight end position and all the things uh, that are involved with it. It's a complicated position. You got to be able to run block and, and, and pass protect and run routes at all different levels. And, you know, we ask our tight ends to do a lot. And he's most natural doing the stuff that relate to receiving. And we saw that the other night. He just has to grow in the other areas. What strides are you really hoping to make? You know, you're not going to have all of your guys as receivers and all that when you're in Cleveland the next few days. What are you really looking for? What strides are you hoping to make? You know, as much as anything else, it's about just getting out there and, and competing. And, and again, uh, you know, Cleveland's a good team. It'll be a good challenge for us you know, with the guys they have on their defense and their defensive scheme. So go, go run our offense against them. And the guys who are available, let's take advantage of that opportunity. You know, the guys who aren't available, stay close to it and try to learn uh, what you can from the situation that you're in. So continue to try to grow, continue to try to stack good days on top of each other. Does, does the way Daniel has performed in practice um, give you a little bit more comfort in being able to maybe open up your playbook more to, to what you want to do? Yeah, again, uh, you, you certainly want to make an environment comfortable for the quarterback, but, but ultimately what we run is going to be what's best for the whole group. And, uh, you know, at different times last year, we had to evolve based on the, the people we had to try to help our team win. And we'll do the same thing this year. You know, if you have to do more or less or a little more of this or a little more of that, that's what we'll try to do. We're always evaluating that. You're trying to play to your players' strengths and try to, you know, minimize any weaknesses that they have as much as you can. And that's across the board. Coach, you, talked a, coach. Little bit, you talked a little bit about Devontae Booker. But what is it exactly, you know, that he brings that you guys really like? We think he's a good player. You know, if you watch him play in college and then, and then in the NFL, when he's gotten opportunities, you know, as a runner, as a pass receiver, as a protector, uh, during his career, he's done a good job. And he's learning, he's learning our offense and learning our system. He's done a good job. He's gotten a lot of work. And uh, he's just one of those guys you want to see play. And we're comfortable putting him in any situation right now.